kids of an amazing Irish family. Uh, and we went to, the girls went to Russia Come From Pray. So I grew up there from fourth class onwards um, and I received a great education, but I must say I never really thought of missionary life or religious life for me. However, towards the end of kind of school years, when I was about 15, 16, I did begin to question. I was involved in Holy Redeemer Church on Main Street Bray. I was part of the folk group, a great folk group, if I'm a, a great parish actually, I realise. When you look back and you realise just what you received, great parish. Um, but I did start to question. I started to ask myself about faith. I started to wonder, was it real or was it not? I remember being on a bus once. Uh, you know the way in Ireland we bless ourselves when you pass by a church, or at least some people used to have them. I was blessing myself and I found myself thinking, what am I doing? And, and I told myself, well, I'm recognizing the presence of somebody there. And I thought about it and thought, I don't believe that. And I, I realized, and for me this was tough, um, that I didn't have faith. That although I was kind of a committed Christian and I was still going to church, um, that I didn't have a personal experience of faith. That I didn't know Jesus. And I began to realize that to know about and to know uh, is different. And I started to find myself going into churches, sitting at the back and looking at the candle. Because <laughs> it moved. <laughs> and saying, if you're there and if you're real, I need to know you. Uh, and I consider that my first prayer. It was a conscious, I need to know you. But I was doing a year of music before I went to university and I decided I needed to clarify my faith before I went there in kind of a chosen career. So I took a year out and went to Spain. Towards the end of that year, I had a very deep and profound experience of prayer. Um, and the only way I can describe it is as if I was really thirsty and I drank. The reading actually was um, John 4, the smart woman. If you only knew who you're talking to, I would give you the water that would quench your thirst. So in that kind of reading, I, I drank an experience of Jesus, which became my center. And although you come back and you deepen, I would say that marked the before and after of my life, that experience. It was that experience of Jesus that led me to opt for consecrated life, to take vows, to stay in a community and be religious and be a missionary, which means tied to no one but Jesus. So you can actually up and off and move, even if that's always going to be difficult because wherever you land, God gives friends. I mean, I love that part of the gospel that Peter complains to Jesus about, what about us that have left everything for you? And Jesus promises a hundred per one and eternal life. And I, God's given me the hundred per one, both in friends and in family, extended family. People sometimes have asked me why this community, and in all honesty, I wasn't looking for a community, I just landed, I was looking for Jesus. Verbum de Missionary Fraternity is the full name, uh, was born in 63, um, and it's a young institute of consecrated life. Why it makes sense to stay made sense and make sense and why I'm still here is because the mission of this community sits in with the experience of Jesus that I had. Um, the charism is evangelization through prayer and ministry of the word. I never thought I would come to Australia. Uh, and I know when people look at my life they think gosh, and I think gosh it's been very rich. <laughs> I've moved around a lot um, and I'm very grateful for that but I think what facilitates that and what grounds it is where I started. I remember doing a retreat once and finding in the words of the person who was guiding me encapsulated what my life is. She said to me, so your pearl of great price is your relationship with you. And what I do with that here is um, seek to teach. I try to form people, I mean I'm teaching theology which means um, with fear and trembling as Paul would say, people pass through my hands in teaching that are going to be future ministers, priests, educators um, of faith and for me that's a tremendous gift and a tremendous respons responsibility. Um, so teaching here at ACU as Catholic University in Australia 
it's with that awareness, it's God's given me faith and given me a ministry that the church affirms and asks me to pass on. I've always used my music, which is kind of my first love. I realized music was tremendously powerful and that culture is shifting in such a way that sometimes words just don't do it. And music can, can prepare a way or can bridge before or after, or despite the words sometimes, can manage to, to, to lead people into an experience of faith. So